about a third of all the encounters of all kinds that I narrate on the channel have more than one attacker. Multiple attacker encounters on the channel are quite common. Filster is one of my trusted holster makers with great offerings like the floodlight and trauma medical equipment to keep you and your loved ones safe. They're one of the few companies that I trust to make a quality product at a good price and I thank them for sponsoring today's video. Every time you add an attacker to the, to the fight, you increase the difficulty by about an order of magnitude. So, um, is a third of all attacks a, meaning, a statistically meaningful amount? Yes, it is very much a statistically meaningful amount. Now, here's the interesting bit. Of those that I see with multiple attackers, in private citizen encounters, I almost never see a private citizen engage more than two attackers with a firearm before the rest skedaddle. Almost never. Now, I'm not saying never. I'm actually going to show you one of the very few that I've ever seen where the good guy engages four attackers. In fact, it's the only one I can remember that he does. And there's a very particular reason. You'll probably catch it pretty quick. Okay? However, even if we see, uh, we see armed robberies where like three guys show up, three guys are actually pretty common. Gunman, grabman, doorman. There's a fourth one involved too, drive man, but you don't normally see them on the cameras. Okay? So those three attacker are pretty common. Two attacker, silly common, usually gunman, grab man. And those happen with some regularity. Having the ability, this, this is where when we're talking about uh, uh, the ability to win a gunfight, uh, when you work on target transition drills, uh, multiple attackers is a big reason for that sometimes. Because if I sit all day here and I go bang, bang, and I shoot that guy a couple times, and then I go bang, bang, yeah, I think he's probably done. Where's his partner? What has happened in all that time? Yeah. Something. Something's happened in all that time, which is why we want to be able to go. Yep, I put my shots where, they, where I wanted them. I called them when the, front, when the shot broke. I know exactly where they went in that guy. And as that second one breaks, I'm looking for my next problem and figuring it out. It's actually one of the things that competition shooting will teach you the very, very best. Now, I'm going to show you the one again that I have that is um, more bad guys than I almost ever see. What you're going to notice here on this one, you see a car sitting here. You see a guy who's locking his door here. You see it's 0400. Okay? Now, uh, this is a young man who happens to be an off-duty Sao Paulo cop. Now, what would he be doing at 0400 with his friend here? He would be going in early to PT. He's in his workout gear, so he's carrying his small gun because he's in his workout gear. What you're going to see here is you're going to see the car come and pinch him in, very common. They're going to try to carjack him. He sees that and goes, oh, no, I got to go get my work on. Bangity, bangity, bang. First guy decides he wants to take a nap. <laughs> Second guy runs off. <laughs> Third guy bounces. At least one more guy, he runs off. Now, our dude is hiding because he ran out. But catch how long that reload took him? <coughs> took him about 17 seconds. Reload his gun. Some of that because he had uh, his reload in his backpack. Secondly, why else did he need to reload? Because he missed. Gun went off 11 times before he reloaded. Number one causes of reloading is missing. They went and chased those guys down. Neither of the good guys were hurt. Why did he engage more than two? Bad guys were stuck in a car. Notice they wanted to run off, but it took them a while to unencumber themselves from the vehicle. So that's a very odd occurrence. Would you agree? Usually, generally speaking, you kill the first one and word spreads fast. And the rest of them decide, you know, I forgot that I left the oven on. And I got better things to do with my day than stand here and be number two that you smoke, generally speaking. Um, the other interesting part of that is generally speaking, we see uh, defenders use more rounds against a single attacker than against multiple attackers. Gener I'll say it again, generally speaking, we see defenders use more rounds against a single attacker than against multiple attackers. Can you think why that is? So attentional focus is absolutely the biggest reason. And the reason for that is, let's just think about this. Let's just say I had attacker number one, attacker number two, and attacker number three in, a, in an encounter. And I knew. I got a three bad guy event, right? So I decide it's my turn to go. Everything else is right. I launch my counter ambush. I drive this gun out here. And I go, I got to fill this guy in first. Bang, bang, bang. Because we follow the boarding house rules. Boarding house rules say everybody gets first before anybody gets seconds. 
but you don't get a bite, you get a serving. Right? That's a, bo that's a boarding house rules. How many is a serving? A couple three. So I put a couple three in this guy, bang, bang, bang. It's been about three quarters of a second since the first shot broke. What's the bad guy number two doing at that point? He's going, oh no. But he's probably just recognizing the tables have done turned. So then I bring over here and I see bad guy number two and what do I do? Bang, 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 I put a serving in him. Now about two seconds, two and a quarter seconds have elapsed and I start looking at bad guy number three. Bad guy number three has now had two and a half seconds to figure things out. What is he doing? He has scampered and skedaddled off and I drive this way and he done gone. Now I come back here to bad guy number one. What's bad guy number one done? <coughs> he has either skedaddled off or assumed room temperature. Now I come back here to bad guy number two. What has he done? Skedaddled off, skedaddled off or assumed room temperature. How many rounds did I fire? Six. I fired six. Okay, cool. Just, a, just an example, right? Now, instead, I got one bad guy who's in front of me. He's all the threat. I don't got anybody else around. So it, it's my turn to go, and I go this, and I go bang, bang, bang. And what changes in him in those first three shots? Probably nothing. Takes him a minute to figure out that he's done been shot and the fibs factor to settle in. So what do I do? Keep at him, bang, 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 because he's still standing there. Now, about round six, he starts going, ow, and changing shape. But he probably isn't down, and so what do I do? I keep going, bang, 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 click. We saw that already out of Philadelphia, didn't we? Why'd you keep shooting him? Because he was moving. Now, we're looking at that, and his movement's going. <laughs> but I don't, I maybe not cogitate that in the second, right? So we tend to see more rounds fired against single attackers than we do against multiples. Uh, now, some of that could be, there's a lot of factors involved there. What's the capacity? What's the capabilities? Those kinds of things, right? But multiple attackers are a big deal. Um, I have another one here for you. This one is pretty serious. It's got a big lead in. Uh, so you're going to see two guys show up down the street. They're going to rob this pharmacy. There's an off-duty cop inside the pharmacy. You see these two dudes run up. You're going to see it kind of go bangity, bangity, bang. Then you're going to see one of them kind of slide out. No. <laughs> Next angle, uh, you're going to see there's an off-duty cop, and he's down in the corner over here. He's, he's down over here. Watch the guys come in. He's going to see him and decide he wants to fight. Bang, shoots the first guy, goes for the second guy, shoots him too. But as he chases that guy, he forgets about the first guy, and the first guy shoots him twice. So he comes back around here, empties his gun on the guy. Notice his gun's empty, but that guy's given up. Ah, I'm done with this. Now he's going, oh, no, my gun has had a malfunction. No, it's not. It's empty. So he's going to go pick up that guy's gun. He's already killed his partner over there. Do you notice? So he's shot in the, in the left leg and in the uh, right side of his groin. All right. So uh, some of the rest of this, recognizing uh, lesson number five, I like to use technical terminology because he who puts the first shot into the meaty bits of the other guy wins almost always. <clears throat> Now, if we wanted to church that up a little bit, we would say the first one to achieve an anatomically significant hit almost always wins a fight. Not 100%, but very often. Marksmanship is the master. This, the reason for this is what we call the FIBS factor. FIBS stands for fudge, I've been shot. <coughs> it's a family-friendly environment. You can, you can utilize a different F word if you'd like, but I won't in a public setting. Okay? So, so when you put a shot in somebody, what generally happens is they go, ow, in an anatomically significant part. Now, I'll tell you, I've seen people shot in the arms, shot in the hands, shot in the legs. That is not an anatomically significant hit. I've seen many times those have zero effect. If you're only able to shoot one shot a second, that's going to take you a long time to figure that out. So most people, they're, they're like, oh, John, how do I and when I? And my honest answer is your marksmanship skills won't make a difference which one of those you try anyways because you won't be able to hit it. So, well, should I shoot him in the face? Can you make a shot on a four inch circle at 15 yards on command? If the answer to that is no, and I would tell you that I would guess out of all the people here this weekend, for 96% of them, the answer is no, then why does it matter? You won't be able to do it in the moment anyway. I don't say that to shame you. I say that as an honest assessment of abilities. So you say, well, wait a minute, what if I can't? It's not rocket science. You just have to actually do the work and get the practice to make it so.